How are you doing today, Tom? Great. Hey, Shmonty in Carolina. I'm doing fantastic. Well, first of all, man, congratulations on the uh, the success of the SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, number one in the box office. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, I, I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> I'm, you might just all be part of an elaborate, like, Twilight Zone kind of dream that I'm having because, the, you know, it, it, shows that have been on the air for 16 years aren't supposed to have a number one movie <laughs> at the box office. What's it like for you living in the fact that you are part of 16 years of people's childhoods? You know, it's amazing, and the, the other actors and I talk about it all the time. It really is this incredible uh, trust that people have and we're just thrilled that the characters still seem to have all this goodwill from from the fans out there and spongebob you know people still like spongebob as a character and patrick and, and their friends and they still like spongebob as a show and and as a property and again that's a statistical anomaly in in the business it's not supposed to happened that way and in the movie last weekend wasn't supposed to it was supposed to make maybe 30 million dollars not 60 so <laughs> it's a good problem to have though it's a great problem to have and, and we we just tr we just treasure it we just treasure the problem so much that that we like i said i you could probably hear the amazement in my voice i i I don't know what to say about it. It's insane, but but it really is the fact that people have, you know, kind of grown up with the show. And some of the people, if you were, uh, you know, ten years old, fifteen years ago, you're now in your mid twenties, and maybe even have kids yourself. And you know, a lot of those people are are coming up to us and saying, you know, you were the voice of my childhood, or you know, you're the voice I heard in my head when I was growing up, and you know, the, you know, my childhood was was great and my parents and I used to watch your show or my childhood wasn't so great and I used to use your show to escape you know whatever uh, people's associations with the show itself are are pleasant and and it's really nice to to be a part of that and just kind of bring silliness into the world and you know when you're doing the show you're not thinking about that you're just trying to be three stooges you know stupid smart funny but there's there's this whole series of byproducts to it that just are unbelievable. It's so it's it's just nice. I mean that's the only lame word I can I can think of. <laughs> it's just it's just really really nice. I feel like it transcends so much. I mean you guys have so many guest stars, guest voices on there, and you know SpongeBob ties in really well with the rock community. I mean you guys have had like Pantera and Gene Simmons and Dee Snyder. Who's been your favorite rocker to work with? Who surprised you the most? Well, you know, you're right. I mean, you know, we're all big music freaks on the show. And, you know, one thing I think sets SpongeBob apart is that from the beginning, the music has been such a big component of the show. I remember when we were first doing the show and Steve Hillenberg, the creator, said, I want, you know, that crazy like 1930s uh, uh, lap steel, pedal steel guitar and, and, and ukulele, you know, but nobody plays that way anymore. And I said, I know a couple of guys that do. I've got two guys for you. I, you know, cause I know a lot of musicians. I said, they are steeped in this crazy 1930s Hawaiian stuff, even though they're young guys they are younger than us. And, uh, you know, the, so those, you know, those guys have done the soundtrack of the show for, for 15 years, but you know, we also love Pantera and D Snyder was on the show. Like you said, uh, David Bowie, uh, did an episode which was a huge thrill and you know i'm i'm i was in high school from 1976 to 1980 so i was like a big punk rock guy so having lux interior the late lux interior from the cramps was a huge thrill for me because they were one of those you know huge seminal bands for me as a teenager the cramps i love them i still love them i'm sure you get asked to do the voices all the time where's the weirdest place you've chosen on your terms to break out the voice and just kind of catch people off guard oh let's see a weirdest thing you know um it's it's funny when you're out there especially when i'm with my kids you know the last thing they want me to do is to be uh you know out on the street doing kooky voices and it's also sort of an irritating needy actor thing to do anyway so so i don't bust it out that much but when it really comes in handy you know, not to be maudlin, but but when it really comes in handy is like when you're, uh, I don't know, like going going to a children's hospital or something like that, and there's these kids and these families that are going through something really difficult and and horrific and 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 taxing, and you can go in and bust out the voice and you see. Uh, you know, a kid who's going through a really hard thing, smile for a second, and then you see his parents smile because it's so nice for them to see their kid smile. And and that's when you bust out the voice and you go, wow, this this stupid skill set that I have actually can do kind of cool 
things out in the world once in a while. It's 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 really uh, you know that's that's when you realize that it's uh, you know it's a pretty neat thing. But I also you know like last weekend I called a kid's birthday party that was having a SpongeBob themed birthday party and. You know, I phoned up while they were cutting the cake. You know, the parents had gotten in touch with me, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it's kind of fun to be able to do that stuff. It's kind of, it's, it's as close as I'll ever get to having a superpower. You know, it's kind of like <laughs> X-ray vision or something. You can turn it on when you want, and right? Turn it off when you want. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, Mr. Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob himself, again, congratulations on the uh, the success for the SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, number one in the box office. Hopefully, it holds that spot for a couple weeks. And and I know you're a busy man, and I just wanted to thank you for uh, taking the time and calling us today, Tom. Well, well, hopefully, uh, Fifty Shades of Yellow will uh, will triumph at the box office this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, by the way, you realize that you can't say Schmonty without sounding like an old Jewish guy. I guess you've met you've not you haven't met my old friend Schmonty. <laughs> <laughs> would Would you be able to give us a Rock 102 Mornings with Schmonty and Carolina in in a voice? Your choice. How do you say it? Uh, Rock 102 Mornings with Schmonty and Carolina. Cool. Hello, air breathers. This is SpongeBob SquarePants. And Gary, my snail. Ah, you are filling your ear holes with the sweet sounds of Rock 102. Mornings on. Uh, never mind. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Rock 102. Mornings. Rock 102. Mornings. Yep. With Schmonty and Carolina. Oh dang it! Here we go. This will be good. The, the second take is always the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, surface dwellers. SpongeBob SquarePants here. You are filling your ear holes with the sweet sounds of Rock 102. Mornings with Schmonty and Carolina. Snails love it too. <laughs> Tom, thank you so much, <laughs> sir. Awesome. You're very. It's always the second take. I can never get it the first time. <laughs> That's killer, man. Tom, have a great day. Glad to do it, man. Bye, guys. Thank you for calling. Take care. Thank you.